Okay, let me let me ask you guys a question. So looking at this pattern, looking at this pattern, if I were to sum up all the terms, if I were to sum up all these terms all the way to infinity, what will it what will it become? What will it be equal to? So press pause and have a go. Okay, so um, so to answer this question, you should be looking at this. You should be looking at this. So uh, so uh, so if if you put if you so. So this is your x. If you put pi into the x, then uh, then this would be pi. This would be pi, and uh, and then put pi into the x. Then you've got to put pi into this. It would be pi to the power of three. So it would be pi to the power of three. Put pi into into here. So it would be pi to the power of five. So it would be pi to the power of five, and so on. So this is your this is your series here. But then if, if you put pi into here, if you put pi into the x. It would be sine sine of pi. It would be sine of pi. Well, sine of pi, sine of pi is is zero. So sine of pi, so sine of pi, so sine of pi will be equal to zero. So so if you sum up everything all the way to infinity, it actually equals to zero. So in this video, we're going to try and show why this thing here equals zero as you as you sum up everything to infinity, uh, why it equals zero. So we're going to try and Understand why it equals zero. So let's uh, let's zoom into this this bit here. So let's zoom into that bit. So let's zoom into uh, to that bit here, and then uh, and then and then we're we're going to put um, we're going to put pi into the x. So uh, so this would be our our series. This would be our series. So we need to check. The first step is we need to check that it's an alternating series. So alternating series, you need to check these three three conditions. Um, discard the alternating component. So discard, discard the alternating component, and then uh, and then make sure all the UNs are, are, are positive. Well, this is a constant to the power. Don't forget, n is moving from zero to infinity, so n will always be positive. So this thing will always be positive. This thing will be will always be positive. Therefore, the whole thing will always be positive. Um, so that's that that has that has been satisfied. Make sure it's non uh, non-increasing. Make sure the limit of this heads towards zero. I'm assuming you can do this because we've done this many times. And by the way, when, when you look at this here, this is a constant. So you can imagine this as being a, a constant. Um, you, you can imagine this as being a constant because it is n that's moving about. So imagine this thing here. Imagine this 2n plus 1 as being, let's just imagine it as n. And then, so, so here you've got exactly the same, exactly the same. Let's just imagine it, the n factorial. Now, this is something that you should recognize. You, you must know this. We've seen this many times as n heads towards infinity. Uh, this is a constant here. The limit of this is actually zero. So, this, so we've seen this many times. You have to ingrain this in your mind. You have to know this by heart. The limit of something that's constant to the power of n over n factorial, the limit equals zero. You must know this. Okay, so so I'm assuming you can do all three here because we've done this many times. So so we know that this is an alternating series. When it's an when when we know it's an alternating series, we know that the remainder we know that the remainder must be less than or equal to 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 this term here to this term here. So going back to here. So going back to here, the remainder will uh, the remainder. Hang on. So looking at this. Don't forget the remainder will be less than or equal to to n plus one. Okay, so the remainder, so the remainder must be less than or equal to 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 the next term, which will be n plus one, which will be two, and then this n plus one, n plus one, and then you've got your your plus, and then you've got your plus, and then you've got your one, you've got your one. Um, so the remainder will be the next term. Well, the next term will be 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1, and then plus 1, plus 1, factorial, and so on. So, so our remainder must be less than or equal to the next term. This is our next term here. Uh, and, then, and then tidy this up, tidy this up. That will then tidy this whole thing here up. This will then become this. And then remember, you have to, um, you have to know this by heart. Uh, this. This, in a way, is very similar to this. Uh, think about it. it. This, even though this this here tends to zero, 
So this here does actually tend to zero. So um, so you can see that um, as uh, as as you sum up all the terms, as you sum up all the terms, the remainder will, will, will just with the remainder will head towards zero. The remainder will just head towards zero. Therefore, we know that this thing here must equal zero. Okay.